Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today we'll learn how to spot the difference between sociopathy and psychopathy. Now, let's begin. Have you ever encountered someone who made you feel strange? Whenever you talk to this person, you start to feel uncomfortable or uneasy. Even if you know nothing about them, something about their personality just, it just seems to rub you the wrong way. This unexplainable feeling is a natural human instinct that we experience around people who lack something most of us have. It's a clear sense of empathy or remorse. These mysterious, often cold personalities, sometimes called psychopaths and sociopaths, have terrified and fascinated us for decades. But how do these complicated conditions actually work? When you hear words like psychopath or sociopath, you might imagine crazed criminals and killers, people who enjoy the suffering of others. But these extreme personality types are far more complicated than the ones that we see in movies and on TV. Real-life sociopaths are likely to be diagnosed with Antisocial Personality Disorder, or APD. That's a psychological condition describing individuals who may be cold, narcissistic, remorseless, and impulsive. People with APD may not care about the feelings of others or the rules of society. They may be self-centered or have trouble forming emotional attachments. At some level, these people may recognize when they're doing something amoral, but they consistently find ways to rationalize their reckless or impulsive behavior, often to satisfy some personal agenda. Despite popular misconceptions, people with APD or sociopaths can experience empathy, though it doesn't happen very often. Just think of a sociopath like a desert of emotions. Most of the time, deserts are bone dry, but every once in a while it rains even in the most arid places on Earth. In the same way, sociopaths may experience flashes of guilt or remorse in certain situations. On some level, they know what empathy feels like. But most psychopaths never experience empathy for themselves. If sociopaths are living in a desert, then psychopaths occupy a world where rain doesn't exist. People with severe psychopathy can recognize the feelings of others, but they have essentially no ability to experience them. Well, you might say they're missing what we call a conscience. For their entire lives, these people have failed to empathize with others, so they learn to survive according to a different set of rules. This is where psychopaths and sociopaths begin to diverge. Though these personality traits have a lot in common, psychopaths and sociopaths tend to operate very differently in relationships, careers, and other social systems. For example, sociopaths have a tough time fitting into most traditional social roles. They tend to be selfish, unreliable workers, toxic partners, and narcissistic friends. They occasionally show glimmers of care or responsibility, but for the most part they think they are above the rules. Sociopaths are commonly reckless, impulsive, and narcissistic, and they rarely consider the consequences of their actions. They take and they take from loved ones, using guilt and deception as powerful weapons to use and abuse the people in their lives. Sociopaths may have some capacity for empathy or remorse, but they may ignore any moral obligations in favor of personal gain. Psychopaths, on the other hand, are more calculated and discreet. They're often more successful at suppressing their antisocial impulses and they do a better job of hiding from the world. Some psychopaths go to great lengths to disguise themselves as friendly, ordinary people masking any remorseless tendencies with a convincing facade. Because psychopaths are more calculated and less outwardly emotional, they can often maintain traditional social roles. In the workplace, for example, they can be reliable employees and successful leaders, enduring stress and fulfilling common social obligations. Psychopaths may even develop long-term relationships. They may get married or start a family, creating a stable life designed around their wants and needs. At first glance, their lives seem secure and comfortable, but a closer examination reveals how shallow these connections really are. Psychopaths are known to trick, persuade, and groom everyone in their lives to see them in a particular way. 
They project a confident and harmless exterior while subtly weaving a complicated web of lies. For years, they've practiced manipulating the opinions of others. Some view their social lives as a kind of game in which they have a leg up on the competition. Like puppet masters, they try to control every situation, satisfying their desires without anyone realizing what's happening under their noses. So what happens then if you catch them in the act? All right, let's say a friend of yours isn't who they say they are. You might have caught them trying to manipulate you, or maybe you get that strange feeling every time they enter the room. You don't want to assume the worst, so you might ask them questions or try to catch them in a lie, but it's not as easy as it sounds. When sociopaths feel vulnerable, they may quickly become defensive, aggressive, and overbearing. They'll lie to get themselves out of trouble or turn the conflict on its head as if you're the source of every problem in their life. Instead of bursting with emotion, psychopaths are more likely to be deceptive, lying through their teeth, or twisting situations to their advantage. They may use tricks like gaslighting to make you question your judgment and to lose faith in yourself. When you're completely overwhelmed, they lull you into a false sense of security and they use their charm to keep you under their thumb. These are common signs of psychopathy and sociopathy. But it's important to remember that not every person with these personality traits is actively malicious. Many psychopaths and sociopaths are considered high-functioning. They live fulfilling lives and they function alongside everyone else, but it's not always easy to tell the difference. Psychopaths and sociopaths tend to build walls between themselves and the world. So how do you know if you're dealing with a more toxic or even dangerous personality? People with malicious intentions often have a history of highly toxic and stressful relationships. If, for example, sociopaths have a reckless tendency to jump into serious relationships at a moment's notice. One day they might impulsively tell you they want to get married and, and then they change their mind a few hours later. If there's a sociopath in your life, you may notice a pattern of hot and cold behavior that's affected your relationship and others in the past. Their impulsive tendencies may also have an impact on their professional lives. Most sociopaths have been fired multiple times due to carelessness, irresponsibility, or conflicts with co-workers. They have an especially hard time with people of authority. Because sociopaths don't like following the rules, they become emotional and they lash out at anyone who orders them around. In stressful situations, they often lose control. They respond with anger, sadness, or a strong desire for revenge. For example, sociopaths often carry long-standing grudges against entire groups of people. Now, of course, they'll never blame themselves. If you ask about their history, they're likely to spin the story in their favor blaming others for their problems, calling them abusive, unreasonable, or toxic. Sociopaths won't hesitate to make up lies about their relationships and careers as long as those lies paint them in a positive light. In some cases, those lies extend well into the realm of fantasy. You might hear a sociopath fabricating years of their personal history just to get attention, to bolster their image, or to evoke sympathy from others. Some stories may be plausible, like serving in the military or working an illustrious job. Others may sound like something out of a movie, like climbing Mount Everest or saving a baby from a burning building. If you listen to them tell enough stories, you may find yourself with more questions than answers. Psychopaths are guilty of some of the same issues. They may fabricate stories or distort their past, but they rarely seek love, attention, or sympathy. To most, psychopaths seem like blank slates or impenetrable walls. They make us wonder how much we really know about them or their past. When they do share personal details, it may sound cold or heartless, uh, just like a robot telling you about their life. Ask a psychopath to describe their spouse, for example, and they may talk about them as if they were a complete stranger. Rather than attention or validation, psychopaths are more interested in control. They strongly desire power and dominance over others, so they pursue social roles that place them in positions of power and influence. They get a rush from intimidating or manipulating other people, something many psychopaths think they deserve to do. In their professional lives, psychopaths gravitate toward careers 
where they can take advantage of others using their superficial charm to climb the ladder. The careers with the highest rates of psychopathic personalities include lawyers, salespeople, and law enforcement officers. Powerful positions where a lack of empathy may be a strength rather than a weakness. In some ways, functioning psychopaths possess the perfect mix of charisma and remorselessness to succeed in our highly competitive society. According to a recent study, there's a strong correlation between extreme wealth and psychopathic personality traits. In other words, many of the world's richest people aren't as caring or empathic as they seem. Clinically, sociopathy and psychopathy have a lot in common. Both personality traits describe people who struggle to understand the feelings of others. Psychopaths and sociopaths can be impulsive and may deceive others in the name of self-gratification. But there are several core differences between these two extreme conditions. One can experience empathy, while the other may never understand it. One leaves a trail of burned bridges, while the other constructs walls between themselves and the world. It can be challenging to identify sociopaths and psychopaths in real life, but these extreme personality traits are more common than you think. Hey, thank you for watching Top Think and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.